you have lathe vibration, let's fix it. Now to be honest, some lathe dancing just as a result of, of turning out around blanks are just too large for the capacity of your lathe. And that's the first step in this troubleshooting guide from the Pyromatic, Pyromatic Manual. But let's assume you've resolved that, that issue and it's within the capacity of your lathe. And let's jump to the bottom of the list and work on that one and that's level the adjusting feet. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. We know that a three-legged stool is always going to be stable because all three legs are always going to be uh, touching it at the same time. But, unfortunately, a wood lathe's got four legs. and that, that becomes a little more challenge getting all four legs touching with equal pressure in order to minimize the vibration. This Paramatic uh, 3520C weighs 726 pounds. Uh, I got it in about February. and. I was turning a, a blank that was a little bit out of round and the leg was vibrating and it definitely should not have been vibrating because I've turned much bigger blanks with my predecessor 3520B uh, as, as shown here without any, any problems whatsoever. And that lathe was 100 pounds lighter. So what was the difference? Well, when I got my, my predecessor uh, lathe almost 15 years ago, I had two neighbors uh, two retired engineers helped me install it. One of them was a, either an industrial or mechanical engineer from, from Canada who uh, that installed equipment in uh, paper mills for a living before he retired. He was also a woodworker and he was meticulous. I don't remember the details, but I know when we set it up, it was absolutely set up as good as it could be and I didn't have any problems with it. Now, when I got, I got this lathe, uh, the, the two folks that helped me uh, set it up, unfortunately, they were still working for a living and they were in a, in a bit of a hurry to get on to work, so we didn't have the time to spend uh, leveling it quite as well as, as uh, I probably should have. And I, I thought it was good enough. Well, it, it wasn't. So when I started getting vibration on some, on some projects, uh, I realized when I started to, to work on this project with this, what was going to be a, a pretty out of round, round piece, I needed to stop what I was doing and fix that vibration. Cross leveling with a spirit lathe to get, to get the lathe perfectly parallel with the floor is not absolutely necessary, but it's certainly a good start. What is essential is that all four legs touch the ground evenly with, e with equal pressure. I want to give this shout out to my fellow club member Tim Robertson who was very helpful uh, in giving me some technical guidance on this process. Thanks Tim. Step one is determining which foot is not, uh, not pressing evenly on the ground. Tim calls this a soft foot. You might start by seeing if you can slip a piece of paper under each foot to identify which one is the high foot. But more than likely, you're going to put a blank on your lathe, slowly turn the speed up until you get a little vibration. Then you're going to go around and touch each of the four feet until you can feel the vibration. Step two is going to be tightening that foot, extending it down until it, it, until it's, it has even pressure on the ground equal to the other uh, feet. The challenge, as you can see from this picture, is there's no way to grab that, that round, round foot, which is typical on most lathes, certainly the Pyromatic, the Laguna, and, and the Deltas, and, and probably a lot more. So how do, you, how do you adjust it? My challenge was how do I lift a 726 pound lathe by myself? I don't have a uh, lift table, I don't have a motorcycle hoist, I don't have a, uh, a motor hoist, so I found an ingenious method I'm fixing to show you. By the way, if you find this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, make it easier for other wood turners to find it. So what to do? I figured out that if I used a, a, a wedge used for uh, a chainsaw work or, or splitting, that I could put it under the corner of the leg and give it a slight tap and raise the leg up just enough where I could tighten, tighten the foot. Then I'd use a block of wood and kind of tap it out and I might have to do that several tries until I feel like that there, until I can tell there's no vibration. I may have to turn the lathe back on with that blank and and feel it to see if that that uh, vibration is gone. I did that with my lathe and the vibration disappeared. Now if you don't have a splitting wedge you could probably make something uh, similar to the shape of, of my wedge as shown in this this picture. Make it a long slope but use very hard wood such as oak and that should work just fine. Just make sure it's thick enough that it, it will get under that that foot 
uh, the, the, the leg of your lathe in order to lift it when you tap it. Now, if you're assembling a new leg and installing those feet for the, for the first time, here's a slick solution that Lyle Jamison uh, provides, and I'll have a link up here to his, his video if you want to watch that full video. But basically, he puts a, a bolt under it of, that fits the, the thread, thread pitch of your particular lathe, now, in his example, uh, the, the hole is, is not tapped, so he uses a nut and adjusts the nut. Uh, if you're using a lathe such as Pyromatic, Laguna, uh, uh, or Jet, where they're, le they're leveling, leveling feet on it that are threaded, make sure you get an appropriate size bolt that, that matches that thread pitch and size. For my Pyromatic, for example, it's a half an inch. On some of the smaller lathes, such as Laguna or Delta, it might be three-eighths of an inch. But on those, instead of adjusting the nut, you'll actually use a wrench to adjust the, uh, the head in order to uh, raise it level. And you'll, you'll actually leave that nut on there, uh, replace uh, that bolt, rather, uh, replacing that, that foot. And it'll work just fine. Now, I, I have seen uh, suggestions to minimize the walking by using some very thick, heavy, uh, dense uh, uh, rubber pads, maybe four inches by four inches square, such as you might cut out of a mud flap on a truck. Uh, if you don't have one, uh, a mud flap from a truck, you might check on, on Amazon and find something, but make sure it's about no more than about three eighths and it is very dense. It's not, not soft. Uh, I'm not sure I would put that under the bolt because that'd be an awful lot of pressure on that one piece of rubber. Uh, you might not get the same effect. Now, in my case, the Pyromatic legs have, have rubber pads on the bottom, so it's, once it's stable, it's not going to walk, and, and that rubber pads helps reduce the, the vibration. Now, if you've got something like a Laguna, they have nylon pads, so if you get some vibration, that lay is still liable to slide across the floor with just a little bit of vibration, and that's where the rubber, rubber pads might really help. Now, sometimes if a, a, a lathe is, even if a lathe is well balanced, you might get some vibration at a certain speed uh, called resonance. Resonance is a phenomenon that amplifies a vibration. It occurs when a vibration is transmitted to another object whose natural frequency is the same or very close to that of the source. So, what that means is sometimes you can speed the lathe up a little bit or turn the speed down a little bit and that vibration will disappear. Now, some folks advocating adding weight to, the, to their, their lathe to, to reduce vibration. Uh, my suggestion to you is uh, don't, don't provide a solution when you may or may not have a problem. Uh, some years ago, when I, when I was uh, thinking about adding ballast to my, my previous uh, Pyromatic lathe, which weighed about 600 pounds, I contacted a fellow club member, an expert turner, uh, Wes Jones, who was used to turning very large pieces, uh, bowls and, and, and hollow forms, and I asked him if he added any ballast to his Pyromatic, and he says no, he didn't find a need for it. So I think the key is uh, if, if you've got a, a, a lathe that just really doesn't have strong legs, uh, you know, it's an older design, maybe sheet metal, you might look at stiffening it up, you might look at adding, adding weight. Typically people, when they do add weight, they add, uh, add sand, sand. But I would say don't just go adding weight just to be adding weight until you see that you've actually got a need for it. So my advice is don't try to solve a problem you may not have. If you like this video, you might be interested in the playlist I have of other lathe maintenance uh, videos. If you're a uh, first time watcher, I'd very much appreciate leaving a comment what you got out of this video. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.